Those are some poofy pantaloons, Sensei. <laughs> oh, hello. My name's Doofy. And this is episode 31 of my talk through of Sheer and the Wanderer. We are finally in Bufu's cave. Getting ready to move on to the next floor. I am so happy to be playing this game for real. <laughs> ah, no cutscenes. It's a beautiful thing. There should be some kind of unspoken rule that you can't make a cutscene longer than a minute. <laughs> Alright, I don't have a shield, so I do have to be careful. Hey! Got some ghost radish meat. Hmm. Guess I will make some herbs. Oh, that was dumb. As I said last episode, when you eat monster meat, you forget all of the traps that you uncover with the herb of sight. So I wasted that herb of sight. But it's okay. I'm learning as I go. <laughs> Boo's Cave is my second most favorite bonus dungeon after Phase Final Puzzle. It's actually a lot of fun to become the monsters. Sometimes I actually wander around as a ghost radish and uh, beat all the enemies and leave a poison herb in each room so that if I ever get in trouble later I can just stand on it and throw it at the enemies. But I'm just gonna load up on poison herbs. Poison herbs are extremely useful early in Bufu's cave. Each one is basically like a single use staff of sloth that can miss sometimes. <laughs> but now that I've got a bunch of arrows and poison herbs I feel much more comfortable. Although I really would like to have a shield. Alright, last episode I started talking about good monster design and I used the mammal to demonstrate the first quality of good monster design which is that it is simple yet deep. The second quality is that the monster design is coherent and also that it's logical. By coherent I just mean that uh, everything works together in the design. The appearance of the monster, the animation of the monster, the special attacks of the monster, they should all kind of flow together. And by logical in Sheeran, I am uh, uh oh. <laughs> Let's see, this is a critical moment. If I get slowed down, this is gonna be ugly. Whew, alright, made it to the corridor. I could turn it into a mammal, but mammal meat is really useful late in the game, so I'm gonna try to poison him with his own herb. Hey, <laughs> oh no. Uh, we are both poisoned. Um, I don't want to well, I guess I could kill it, and then the dark eye wouldn't come any closer to me. Uh, I'll just use the snaky meat. Hehe, <laughs> see the dark eye around that hard corner is just gonna sit there, as we learned before. Let me revert so I'm not stuck as a snaky. Shoot an- oh, <laughs> that arrow was meant for you. <laughs> When you don't have a shield and you're kind of low on HP, it's a good idea to fire an arrow every few steps just in case there is a dark eye waiting for you out or a gator scissor hands. I've got tons of poison herbs lying around and poison herbs take up a whole space in your inventory. They're only a single use, so it's important just to use them. Don't hoard them. Oh, it's a little too dangerous. I don't want to break my godly man purse. I'm gonna go all the way around. Gator scissor hand meat in this game actually has a perk. If this low level gator scissor hands attacks me, it only gets one attack. But if I eat scissor hand meat, I'm actually able to attack twice, so I get an extra attack. And as scissor hands level up, they get an extra attack, so the very highest level gator scissor hands that can attack four times. That meat will actually give you like five attacks in a row, which makes it pretty powerful. You can one hit almost everything. I understand why they made that buff to the meat of the Gator Scissor Hand, but I feel it really hurts the overall logic of the game to uh, give Sheeran an additional attack above what the monster has. I wish they had just made the Gator Scissor Hand attack a little less powerful and given the level one Gator Scissor Hands two attacks. But, uh, it is a coherent design. It makes sense that it would attack multiple times because it has two blades, one on each hand. Let's see here. I'll use up my poisoned herbs. I've got plenty in my man purses. I'm gonna be double teamed. So I'll run away. Where was I? Oh, uh, it's important for monster design to be logical. And in Sheer and the Wanderer, 
that mainly refers to the promotion process. You want the gain in powers and abilities as a monster is promoted to a higher level to make sense. A perfect example of this would be the uh, Chubbs of Magical Dragon family in this game. Level 1 Chubbs breathes fire in a straight line at you. He's a dragon, he breathes fire, he has a powerful attack, that makes sense. Level 2 Chubbs breathes fire at you anywhere in the room. If he levels up one more time, he can breathe fire at you from anywhere on the floor. And then for the fourth promotion, it kind of falls apart. It's not really logical, all it does is just do more damage. Maybe it could breathe fire at you that hit you when you were invisible and or inside of a wall. Maybe it could breathe fire that did splash damage, but it needs something. Just increasing the amount of damage that the fire does is not really an interesting promotion. Let's contrast that design with one of the new monsters from Sheeran 2 on the DS. Wait, before, before I talk about this, the numbering system for the Sheeran games is a little bit complicated, so... Chances are, if you're watching this, you already know most of the history of Sheer and the Wanderer, but I'm going to give you a brief overview just so we're all on the same... Hey! Rice Changer just leveled up to a Rice Boss. Sweet! Do I have something that could kill a Rice Boss? I, I have my Rice Boss still, but I don't even have to waste that. I got poisoned herbs out the wazoo. Just got to be careful I don't step into it. Ouch. Hey, there he is. <laughs> Even if he does rice ball me, I think I can get away. It's a little risky, but... Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> ah, I meant to throw that herb. Thank goodness I didn't run into somebody. In retrospect, walking down that corridor without shooting arrows was kind of dumb. Yeah, I don't care. You slow down, Mr. Rice Balls. You can't catch me. This, this is when I run into a dark eye and die. Okay. Ah, this is going to take a long time. Even if I run into somebody, I can just turn him into a mammal on the other side. So I think I'll be alright. It's going to be so worth it when I get all this experience. Hey, hey. Alright, while I chip away at Mr. Rice Boss, uh, I'll go over the brief history of Sheeran the Wanderer. The Mystery Dungeon series was made by Chunsoft, as I said in the first episode. They made the... Dragon Quest games and the best character in Dragon Quest 4 which is the pinnacle of the Dragon Quest series just as this is the pinnacle of the Mystery Dungeon series is Torniko or Taoloon in America the merchant his chapter in that game completely transformed my idea of what an RPG was capable of when I was a kid and it's a little bit subtle but uh, I could talk about it for a long time I'll probably dedicate an entire episode to Tornico later on in the talk through. But he was so popular in Japan they made a whole game about him. And it was the first mystery dungeon game. Tornico was just going in dungeons looking for treasure to sell so he could upgrade his shop. And that game had all of the monsters from Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest in it. That game was a hit in Japan so they made a sequel with all original characters and that sequel Mystery Dungeon 2, Sheer and the Wanderer, is the original version of this game, the Super Famicom one. And you can still find copies everywhere because the Super Famicom, Mystery Dungeon 2, was an enormous smash hit in Japan. If you find Japanese YouTube videos of the original Super Famicom version of this game, um, they have thousands and thousands of views. I mean, it basically launched an entire genre in Japan. Why are you hassling me, Gator Scissorhands? Man, I'm just trying to make some arrows, make a living. Gee. <laughs> Alright, I have a terrible memory, so I will forget that my godly man purse is full of poison herbs unless I take them out. That's how absent-minded I am. <laughs> so I'm going to take those out just to remind myself that, hey, you know, you got those. Oh, uh, there's so many times when I die and I have like an herb of victory and I just, I forget that I have it. It's so frustrating. That's why it's really important to slow down during a critical moment and go through your inventory carefully. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. I think I can take this guy. Um, at this point, the history gets complicated because there are three branches off of the Super Famicom Mystery Dungeon 2. 
The branch that we all know, of course, is this game, the remake, but is actually the third sort of a remake of this game, or branch of the game, I should say. There is a direct sequel to the Super Famicom version, Shirin 2, for the Nintendo 64 of all systems. And if you can look past the very dated graphics, it's a really good game. They carried over the Chintala from the Game Boy Shirin, and I like the mammal as a monster design, but I do not like the Chintala. It's not very well designed. We'll talk about that later. That's one branch, the official sort of canon line of Shirin the Wanderer goes Shirin the Wanderer for the Super Famicom, Shirin 2 for Nintendo 64. The third game, Shirin 3, was made for the Wii. I'm not a big fan of that game. Although I do think it's cool. Hey! So I have a rustless armband. Kind of not a super useful armband, but I'll name it just so I know what it is. Hmm. I guess. What is rustless? Maybe stainless steel? We call it the stainless steel armband. I... Ugh, that's the problem. I always run out of characters. Hmm. I guess I could just leave it as stainless. Nah, there's gotta be something else that doesn't rust. Think back to your chemistry classes, Doofy. <laughs> what metal does not rust? I know! Aluminum! I will call it the... Aluminizer. Or maybe just... Aluminize? Hmm. Yeah, I'll just leave it at Aluminize. Although, if you want to get technical, aluminum does oxidize. It forms aluminum oxide Al2O3, which forms a thin layer on the surface of the aluminum. That layer reacts with water to become inert, protecting the rest of the aluminum below. Unlike iron oxide or rust, which flakes away in the presence of water, allowing the reaction to continue and eat away all of the iron. I can't believe I remembered that from AP Chemistry. That was like 20 years ago. <laughs> Must have had a great AP Chemistry teacher, I did. Alright, uh, where was I? Sheeran 3 for the Wii. I, I do think it's cool that it was localized in the US, only the second game to make it to the US. Whenever you find a staff in Bufu's cave, it's almost always a Bufu staff. So I will call this my meat of fire staff. I'm ready to meetify. By far the most powerful staff in the game because <laughs> basically anything you don't like, bam, turn into a piece of meat. Hmm. I guess I could... I said before that rice balls were obsolete. You can use them to increase your maximum fullness. That would be nice to do. So I wouldn't have to worry about eating meat all the time. I'm gonna go ahead and put down all my full godly man purses so he doesn't rice ball them. And then try to- oh my gosh, my meatify staff! Voice changer! I swear there's an algorithm that determines which item in your inventory is the most valuable. And the rice changer goes for that. Cause I can have- I could have like 12 weeds and one firebrand plus 99 and I know the rice changer would rice- Oh, what?! Doofy, this is what happens when you don't pay attention. Alright, whenever you die, you gotta think, how can I prevent this in the future? I need to keep an eye on dead soldiers and read the dialogue boxes when enemies level up. Oh, I can't believe I missed that. Alright, well, on the plus side, this is a good point to end the episode. Next episode, we will start attempt to Abubu's Cave and fix the Chintala. Not like neuter fix the Chintala, but I mean, you know. Improve the design. I'll need your help in this endeavor next time on Sheer and the Wanderer. I saw the thing right before I died. It had one long horn and two big eyes. Took a step towards it, which was pretty dumb. Looks like I'm starting over. I'm back at level one. Poison herbs out the wazoo!